Now it's time for the songs method. When I'm recording lighting for a church or for worship music, sometimes I want to use the songs method. And the songs method is pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to build it here in a second. But the quick and easy explanation is that the songs method literally just takes each song that you would do as a church and goes ahead and builds a cue list for it inside of Onyx. And then it's simple for your volunteers on a weekly basis to go in and arrange the cue list in the proper order, or you can do it. Um, but you might not have, a while it takes a bit more time to set up uh, on the front end, it allows you to really go ahead and once you've programmed a song, you don't have to touch it again. Uh, even if you do set changes and stuff like that, often you can just update your presets and everything will come in line and you'll be able to use those same cues for that song again. And so with worship music, a lot of times, most churches generally repeat a lot of the same songs over and over and over again. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that that worship leaders talk about where, you know, um, most people don't listen to worship music, first of all, outside of church. And most people, if they're not musical, they don't pick up songs fast. So once they do know a song, you, you really don't want to you don't want to just skip over it and throw something else in right away because uh, it allows people to to really engage with the music once they learn it, especially if they're not musical. Um, and so the songs method is pretty simple. I'm just gonna go ahead in, and first I'm gonna go find my cue list. Actually, I'm gonna go back to my cue list here and find some of those. Uh, cue list that I made for my uh, whole service method, like the pre post service one. So I'm just going to copy that down onto a fader. And then the welcome and sermon. Again, copy that to a fader. And so I'm going to borrow those from my whole service method. If you didn't catch that video, you can catch it here. Once you've got that, we can just go song by song and program out what we want the stage to look like. Okay, and there's, there's a couple tips and tricks here when you're programming song by song. This works for worship music, and uh, it's also going to work if you're, you know, write, running songs for and recording cues for like a live band um, that's going on tour. So what you want to do is the very first cue of the song, you want to be what we call a blocking cue. And the easiest way to do that is using the load command inside of Onyx. So let's set something up, okay? Um, let me think of a song... Um, well, it, it, does, it doesn't matter. We'll just call this song one so it uh, stays predictable or stays uh, relevant into the future. And so literally I'll go ahead, you know, bring up my wash. Let's just run those at 50 for here because I've got some downstage pars. Let's say this song is uh, upbeat. We'll start with adding a little yellow on the front light to tone up the band a little. I always like to keep my singers in with a white spot, though, which we're doing here. Then I'll get my upstage ones, and um, like I said, this is kind of a fairly upbeat song. I've got an M touch in front of me as well. Um, it's going to be called the NX touch soon, but um, I might hit the record button there from time to time, so be aware of that. But then I'll grab my moving lights. I've got some truss up lights, too. Pop them in a nice... Nice red. Are we kind of doing a red theme here? Sure we are. Grab my movers here. Turn on my washes. They're back here. Maybe I go ahead and I point them at the ceiling to really light up the room. Then I give them a color. Going nice and upbeat here. Then I might take my beams. I think I just gave them a color, but we'll also put them at the ceiling and turn them on. Dang, those are bright. Turn them on just a little bit. <laughs> then our spots. Put them in a position. Turn them on. And uh, give them color. Stick with, stick with that yellow for these guys. Don't love this position, though. Do a nice fan position. Awesome. So this could be our opening look. I'm actually going to go ahead. I've prepared a few things for later in the song. I'm going to turn off the spots, turn off the beams. And so what I want to do here, just to start off the song, the first, we'll call this, um, actually, we'll just give it a name, but we'll choose 
older song names. We'll, so we'll just call this How Great Is Our God. Don't know if it really matches that song that well. It kind of does. Could. Um, and so I'm just going to go here and I'm going to press load, load. And what that does, if I go to my programmer here, is it loads all the information for everything inside of the show file and allows you to, uh, it kind of blocks it out so that no matter where I come from to go into this song in the future, whether it's the same programming or different, I'm always going to get the same look. So we'll make a cue list here. Name it. Killer. So that's the first cue. Now we only need to do that load load on the first cue. And then after that, we really just need to go ahead and modify what we want. So maybe for the pre-chorus, we're going to bring on the spots. Maybe we're going to go ahead and drop a gobo in them. We'll make that our second cue. I can always go here to cue list values and I want to name the cues as I go as well. When you're naming cues, um, it's also really helpful if you have a line of the song where you want this to change on, you can you can write that in here. And um, so you could say, you know, pre, chorus, after, um, and uh, I forget what it is. Line goes here. And so then you've got that here in this spreadsheet. You're able you're able to see it uh, right there. And so you can you can have your volunteer read that so they can follow it as they're going along. Let's go ahead now and uh, go for a chorus look. So maybe we pop all these guys to white or whitish. Nice CTO look there because we've got a warm color temperature to those lights. And then we send them to the ceiling. I always like that for this song. And maybe we go ahead on the pars and we run a little, run a little green effect. Or actually, stop. We'll run a blue effect because that'll that'll move them up to white. Again, my my goal here in this particular video is not um, to create an amazing design, but to show you how I like to set things up for worship music. So let's slow that way down. So now we've got a nice chase on those guys. Maybe we go with the timing here and uh, mirror it side to side. Something like that. So now we'll go ahead and save that. We'll call that our chorus cue. And so we're going to do this inside of Onyx for every every song that we have. We're going to do every part of every song. For example, I could literally um, go ahead and I could go, let's see, copy, Q, 2, at 4. And so now I've copied that second Q, which I accidentally renamed to nothing for the, uh, for the pre-chorus. And then maybe we go into another verse so I can go here and copy... Q1 at 5, and then we'll do another chorus. We can copy Q3 at 6, then we can go and click through them, verify everything works right, set any timings we need to do in here, and, and also name them. See our chorus there. Awesome, back into our intro. Now notice... In Onyx, one thing to know, again, you can get this from my videos here on YouTube or Onyx for the complete newbie in Learn Stage Lighting Labs, but um, notice here that my chase is still going after that chorus, and I might not want that effect to still be going. And you always got to remember, if you copy a cue from earlier, you just want to gonna go to that effect and, and stop it. And then I can go ahead and update this cue. Perfect, good to go. And so then we're good. That's that's really all you got to do um, to build a song. So then what I'm going to do, this is where it gets interesting, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually, what I'll do is move this up to my 
my playback buttons. I like to have these here. And uh, what I, what I kind of like to do here is have this set to custom because then that's going to select it as well as play it. And then I like to modify my window here so that I can uh, just unlock this workspace and then edit view, split this in half, add in a cue list values. Oops, add in a selected cue list rather. And so then side by side, I can resize these buttons if I need to. I can have the volunteer click the cue, the first, uh, click the song, which is going to activate that first cue. And then it's going to highlight it here. So for example, if I go in here now and I record a second song, that's not a real song, but we'll just call it song X and I record a few cues in it. So now we've got song X that's got three cues, you know, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, whatever. And so then the only thing I have to do to make this automatically select the one is I just got to click this plus selection and be in custom here. And once I do that, when I go to a second song, it highlights it automatically. It brings up that view here and we're good to go. And then what I would do again, like I mentioned week to week is literally just go in here, have all my songs. And so when I'm preparing for a new week, I'm going to go ahead and maybe on page two here, maybe I go down to page two and this is my library of songs. And then for a given week, I'm going to copy the songs that I need into page one. And I'm going to arrange them exactly in order that they're going to be sung so that the volunteer can get, you know, here on the main faders on the M toucher or on some other hardware can play back the pre post look, or they can play back the uh, welcome and sermon look. But then when it's time to do the music, they can come up here and be able to just click through the cues that make up the songs and they do it exactly in the order of the service right here. So it's really twofold. It helps you if you're programming it because once you've made a song, you can just keep it down here on page two and then week of when you need a song, you just copy it in. And then in a given week, maybe you've got one new song, maybe you've got two, you can build a couple quick cues for it, put it into your file. You've got that song forever now. And also it saved you a lot of time. So I hope this helps you uh, kind of figure things out. The next method that we're going to go through in our next video is what I like to call the colors method.